Today's review is sponsored by the new hit board game, Kidney Stone Catchers, from the people who brought you Inflatable Operation and Vasectomy Blowout. Watch it, Alan. I'm shooting. Cannibal Ferox. Umberto Lenzi and Ruggiero Diodato are two of the biggest names when it comes to Italian cannibal movies. Lenzi created the genre with Man from Deep River, and Diodato created the most notorious movie in the genre, Cannibal Holocaust. There have been many additions to the Italian cannibal genre, including a couple other films made by both Diodato and Lenzi. Cannibal Holocaust tends to reign supreme because it's so damn effective. But in 1981, Umberto Lenzi directed Cannibal Ferox, a.k.a. Make Them Die Slowly. This one is held in the same regards as Cannibal Holocaust. In terms of Italian cannibal movies, these two are the most notorious. <laughs> The two films have their similarities. Many people consider Cannibal Ferox to be the unofficial sequel to Cannibal Holocaust. Cannibal Ferox follows two different stories. The first story takes place in New York City. This part opens with a murder committed by the mob. I won't. I swear. In this B-plot, we follow a detective named Lieutenant Rizzo, played by Robert Kerman, who played Professor Monroe in Cannibal Holocaust. He's looking for this drug dealer named Mike Logan, who stole money from the New York mob. How are all you girls today so stupid? Listen, six weeks ago, your precious little Mike ripped off $100,000 from a Brooklyn mob, and they're all over the city these days headhunting for him. Also in this opening, we see the actor Perry Perkinan, who played Jack in Cannibal Holocaust. This detective plot only takes up about 20% of the movie. It's not a bad plot. It is entertaining, but it interrupts the cannibal movie every now and again. And even though it does have some connection to what's going on in the cannibal side of things, it does kind of throw you off when it switches to the New York City side of things. The majority of this movie follows an anthropology student named Gloria, her brother Rudy, and her friend Pat. She's heading into the Amazon jungle because she wants to write a book about cannibalism. Her theory is that cannibalism is only a myth, and she's heading into the jungle to try and prove her theory. She's not the brightest bulb. My thesis claims that cannibalism as an organized practice of human society does not exist and historically has never existed. During their trek through the jungle, the group runs into Mike Logan, played by Giovanni Lombardo Radici, and his injured companion, Joe. The two claim that they have just escaped from a cannibal tribe. The group bands together to try and escape the jungle, but it's clear that Mike is unhinged, plus Joe is injured, which makes escape rather difficult. As the movie goes on, both Gloria and Rudy learn the truth about Mike. It turns out that he was the one terrorizing the tribe, going as far as to torture and kill one of the tribal members. Let's get out of here. Look, please. Before they can escape, the young men of the tribe return and discover the crimes committed by Mike. They capture the whole group and prepare to enact their bloody revenge. And 
And now comes the time where I give my usual disclaimer. When it comes to Italian cannibal movies, I do not approve of the animal cruelty. I go into more detail about this in my Horror Talk series. I did an episode on cannibal movies. If you want to know more about my thoughts on this, just go check out that video. But just understand, I don't approve of the animal cruelty. Now let's move on from that and get into some good flesh-eating fun. <laughs> I wouldn't call Cannibal Ferox my second favorite cannibal movie, that would be Cannibal Apocalypse, but it is a very close third. It doesn't quite have the same punch as Cannibal Holocaust, but it still leaves an impact. No, don't! You could be Rudy's. No! Ferox stands on its own with its over-the-top nature. The characters are a little more exaggerated. The kills are more extravagant. Once the group gets captured by the cannibals, it leans more into a torture movie. There are a lot of moments that are rough to watch. It follows similar themes to Cannibal Holocaust how civilized people treat primitive people. The main characters commit atrocities against the tribe, which leads to their murders. The difference is, in Ferox, it's only one character committing the evil acts, Mike. The other characters are just caught in the crossfire. They're guilty by association because they can't explain themselves to the tribe. The men come back from their fishing trip, see the crimes that have been committed, and clearly to them, these people are guilty. No one speaks the same language. They can't really communicate with each other. So, yeah, in the tribe's mind, these people who are here with these dead bodies are guilty. Throw down the knife, Ruby, it's better. In Cannibal Holocaust, the horror comes from seeing what the documentary film crew is doing to these primitive people. And when they get killed, it is horrifying but we kind of understand it from the point of view of the tribes. In Cannibal Ferox, Mike is the only real villain, and in that movie, the horror comes from the fact that he's taking these innocent people down with him. They're all getting tortured, despite the fact that most of them didn't do anything. Please, run! As brutal as the kills and the torture is, the scariest thing in this movie is Giovanni Lombardo Radici. He's one of my favorite Italian actors, and during this small period of time, he was in four great Italian horror movies. City of the Living Dead, Cannibal Apocalypse, House at the Edge of the Park, Cannibal Ferox, and three of those movies came out in 1980. For me, one of the scariest scenes in this movie is the scene when we're told the truth about what Mike did to the tribe. This is not the goriest scene in the movie. There is some gore, but there are also moments that are more suggested. What makes this scene so unsettling is just how sadistic the character of Mike is. When the tribe starts torturing and killing off the prisoners, it is disturbing. The kills are very effective and they do make you squirm, but the tribe is not taking pleasure in what they're doing. To them, this is their form of justice. But Mike, on the other hand, when he's torturing this guy, he's getting some kind of sick pleasure from it. He seemed to get a perverted kick out of making the poor son of a bitch suffer. It's all in the eyes. Crazy eyes are some of my favorite form of visual acting, and Giovanni has some of the best crazy eyes. I love me some good face acting. 
But as effective as I think that scene is, the kills and the torture are hard-hitting. That's the main draw of Italian cannibal flicks. The brutality. <laughs> I'm getting into spoiler territory here, but I think it's important to know what kind of movie you're getting into. When it comes to more extreme, disturbing, graphic movies, I'm okay with talking spoilers and I'm okay with people hearing spoilers just for the sake of knowing if this is the kind of movie they would be curious to check out. The character of Mike ends up getting castrated. No! <laughs> Castration is quite common in Italian cannibal flicks. You see it a lot in more extreme horror movies, but for me, the one in Ferox is the most brutal because usually in these movies, when it happens, it's a death sentence. The person usually dies shortly after the cut, but in Cannibal Ferox, Mike is kept alive after the chopping. What are they doing to him? I'm cauterizing the wound. Otherwise, he'd bleed to death. He is eventually killed, but the fact that he's emasculated and then kept alive afterwards is more effective for me. The other standout moment is when a woman is killed by way of hooks in her tits, and then she's strung up by said tits. No! Ah! 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 Now, I don't know how strong a woman's breast assists are. I doubt they would be able to hang from hooks, but regardless of if it's possible, it hurts. It hurts to watch. It's the most brutal moment in the movie, and it leads to one of the most haunting lines in the flick. Oh, God. Please let her die soon. Oh, let her die soon. And let me die soon, too, please. As is the case with most cannibal flicks, Ferox is not going to be for everybody. It doesn't quite have the same punch as Cannibal Holocaust, but I don't fault the movie for that. That's why Cannibal Holocaust is Cannibal Holocaust. But Ferox has earned the silver medal in terms of Italian cannibal flicks. I do prefer Cannibal Apocalypse, but Cannibal Ferox is still a quality cannibal flick for people who like cannibal flicks. And with that, let's get to the Grindhouse rankings. We've got a body count of 15. The kills consist of, but are not limited to, poison darts, death by jungle traps, brains chopped out, and hooks in tits. It reaches the cannibal requirements with flesh eating, jungle adventure, and graphic violence. There's a lot of nudity in this flick, including breasts and a dick that are not treated very well. Mike Logan is the real villain of the movie. He's got a good psychotic look, and when he does bad things, he seems to enjoy them. The Cannibal Tribe is still a good threat. They do some vicious things, but they aren't really the villains. They're just retaliating to the violence committed against them. The other characters are serviceable. We don't want to see them die. The main reason we care is because they're innocent people being brought down by Mike's evil acts. And the ending is a little off-putting, not in an effective way. It could have been done better, but it's a decent way to wrap up the story. I'm giving this a 4.3 out of 5. It's a damn good addition to the cannibal genre and a good follow-up to Cannibal Holocaust. As always, I want to thank all of you for continuing to watch and support this channel. Please leave a comment down below. Let me know what you think are the most hard-hitting kills in movies. This is the Maniac, here to remind you that the Grindhouse will never die. Oh, <laughs> that could have ended in disaster.